Because women in science have the power to change the world. Discover Women in Science, presented by the L'Oreal Foundation. Nicola Spalden is a pioneer. She's one of the rare researchers in the world to have created her own field of research. Defying the laws of physics and the prejudice of her peers, she invented new materials of a type once thought impossible to make, multiferroics. Behind this barbaric name hides the hope of a new technological era. So one really needs to have, I think, not to just improve on our existing technologies, but in order to be able to support the new proposed technologies, one needs to have real paradigm shifts in, in the function of devices so that they're not using as much energy as they're using at the moment. Nicola heads the Materials Theory Department, a discipline at the frontier of physics and chemistry, of engineering and biology. With her 15-strong team, Nicola creates new materials from nothing. A fundamental challenge, as from the dawn of time, new materials have been the key to creating new technologies. Yeah, so I think it's significant that the major eras in human civilization are all named after the materials that were most important for the culture at the time. So, for example, the Stone Age, when humans really learned empirically that naturally occurring materials, stones, um, could be used to assist their, in their living in, in performing tasks. Um, and then moving on to Iron Age and, and Bronze Age, where the first examples of really materials processing occurred. More recently, the 19th century was the age of steel. It paved the way for the Industrial Revolution. Steel enabled the construction of bridges, ships, trains, planes and cars, all ever more efficient. The 20th century saw two major revolutions. In the 70s, plastic, a synthetic oil-based material, revolutionized all our everyday objects. The second revolution took place in the 1990s with the use of a high-value added material, silicon. It's the basic material for all our electronic appliances, from computers to mobile phones. Silicon enabled the advent of information technology. As Materials research is, of course, we ask ourselves, what will the next age, what are the materials that will be used in a kind of beyond silicon age? And we develop new materials with new functionalities that might provide the replacement for silicon when, it, when we exceed its capabilities. And the end of the silicon age is near. With current technology, we're reaching the limits of miniaturization and the power of electronic devices. As Sarah Springman, rector of ETH, explains. We are facing a paradigm shift in materials engineering around the speed of computers. We cannot keep going smaller and smaller. We have to find new ways of being able to speed up to the expectations of society and industry, and so Nicola's designs of these new systems that started off theoretically in a computer that are now being built in a completely unique materials synthesis lab are absolutely essential. A revolution in the computer world is therefore underway. Laboratories around the world are looking to invent the technology of tomorrow. Nicola took a bold stance. She went right ahead and invented materials of a new type. They don't yet exist, but tomorrow they could well find their way into all our new generation electronic devices. Their name, multiferroics. Their superpower, being capable of fulfilling several very complex functions simultaneously. Take, for example, an ordinary computer. To work, it requires two types of materials that take up both space and energy. Electrical components to perform calculations and magnetic components for storing data. Multiferroic materials are capable of carrying out both functions, a proper revolution. So multiferroics are certainly one candidate for further miniaturization of devices, and perhaps more than the miniaturization, the driver is that they will use an awful lot less energy than conventional devices that we have today. It's a key issue. As with the exponential growth of connected objects and information flows, if we don't change technologies, by 2030 they will swallow up 50% of global energy, which is untenable. 
But if Nikola's idea looks simple on paper, there are still a lot of obstacles to overcome, because creating these materials defies the laws of physics. Before Nikola, in fact, no one thought that a material might at the same time have electrical and magnetic properties. At the start, a colleague, a kind of senior colleague, calling me up and saying he wants to have a workshop on impossible materials and he'd like me to come. Nicola was 28 and a postdoctoral fellow. Her work on multiferroic materials was so avant-garde that it would take years to be recognized by the scientific community. A long, lonely path for a young researcher, but one that finally bore fruit. A few years later, she proved that her theory was feasible. She had created her own field of research. Today, she is the undisputed reference in multiferroics. It wasn't Silicon Valley that attracted this pioneer of material science, but Switzerland. The land of clocks and chocolate is also home to an elite university that recruits the world's finest scientific talents, ETH. Since its founding in 1855, the Zurich Institute of Technology has been a Nobel Prize factory. 21 in all, including the most famous amongst them, Albert Einstein. Like her illustrious predecessor, Nikola is revolutionizing the very foundations of physics. Nicholas Spaulding is one of the most leading researchers in the field of multiferroics. And ETH always seeks to find and appoint the very best in the world. Therefore, it's a, a logical step. And of course, we had to persuade her. And I understand that she was actually, in the end, very happy to come here. Five years ago, Nicola was working for the University of Santa Barbara under the Californian sun. There she met her husband Roy, an engineer from New Zealand. A dream environment for this couple who enjoy outdoor activities. But ETH made her an offer she couldn't refuse. An almost unlimited budget to conduct her research and a typical Swiss living environment. Sometimes I think Switzerland, in fact, exists solely to allow ETH professors to be creative in teaching and research because I feel like everybody runs around to facilitate this for us. It's really paradise. Yeah, the level of respect you have in society is, is extremely high. And well, I can say I'm not used to that. <laughs> We're not used to being respected. Yeah. <laughs> this little girl with a 70s look is Nicola, born in England 47 years ago. Her father was a printer, her mother a secretary. An only child, she chose material science, no doubt in part thanks to them. Yeah, so as a child, as a family, we spent a lot of time outdoors with hiking and also skiing. And I was quite fascinated, particularly by rocks. I enjoyed rock climbing a lot. And this actually turned out to be very relevant for material science. Materials are often have very many similarities with rocks. Cambridge, Berkeley, Yale an itinerary of excellence. Nicola studied in the finest universities with a disconcerting facility. Yeah, at school I think I was a, a major nerd, basically. Yeah, I was, um, <laughs> I really enjoyed mathematics and science. I kind of liked the problem-solving aspects of. Every morning, Nicola starts her day with an update on all the work of her team of scientists. 15 hand-picked brains. To join this high-tech lab, you need not only exceptional skills, but also undeniable human qualities. Moreover, to ensure that good humor prevails within the group, everyone has the right of veto on newcomers. We spend a lot of our time working together as a team, and if um, we don't enjoy working with each other, then it simply isn't fun anymore. Chiara, from Italy, is one of the most recent recruits. You know, it's quite exciting to work with somebody who has basically created a field, right? Multiferroics are still at the development stage. In devising new materials capable of fulfilling several functions, Nicola and her team use modeling and digital simulation techniques. As we plan a house brick by brick, they put atoms together. This is the theoretical phase, before the experimental phase, which consists in making these materials in the lab. Then one step remains, testing these materials to make sure they have the properties imagined. And for this crucial phase, Nicola called on the expertise of the most important research center in Switzerland, the Paul Scherer Institute. Studying the infinitely small requires infinitely big tools. In this huge building is one of the most modern particle accelerators in the world. It was built for one purpose, to make ultra-powerful x-rays. 
So here we have to use very intense x-rays because the feature that we're looking for is um, very small compared with the rest of the material. The x-rays arrive in this futuristic machine, a measuring instrument especially designed to scan the material at a microscopic scale, that of the atom. Behind this window is a sample of the last material made by Nicola. Though she is able to predict its properties, Uls Stab, the physicist with whom she works, is the only one able to measure them. I mean, it's also a very strong competition. New information can only be discovered once. Once it's discovered, it's discovered. Every day, all over the world, new materials are being discovered, but few of them leave the laboratory. To be the first to make the ideal material, the one that will revolutionize the computer world, is Nicola's quest for the Holy Grail. Without knowing whether her research will end tomorrow, in 10 years' time, or never, this is the heart of fundamental research, a highly strategic issue for ETH. It's essential to invest in fundamental research, to be able to discover something that actually is completely original. Very often you have no idea what the application is going to be, but you know what? It really doesn't matter. And it took a hundred years before Einstein's ideas were able to be proven And like Albert Einstein, Nicola is a musician. I try to practice an hour a day, if, and so actually if I don't get any time to play my clarinet, I get a little bit grumpy. It means that I didn't have any time for me during the day. Einstein was convinced that his scientific discoveries were intimately linked to his musical abilities. Let's hope that Nicola's research has the same success. Science was presented by the L'Oreal Foundation.